The current generation of consoles has been out for a few years now, but to say everything has gone smoothly would be a lie. Whether it's gamers clinging to last gen, the companies themselves making odd decisions, or the market in general, it's been a bumpy road. But, at least for now, the future is looking brighter for this generation of consoles with great console pricing and more large exclusive games coming on the horizon. But the more I think about it, the more I've come to realize there's an inescapable truth of this generation. And that truth is that it really hasn't begun yet. Allow me to explain. As a previous video of mine has gone through, cross-gen games have released for far longer than previous generations, which inherently means it will take longer for developers and games to fully utilize current-gen consoles. To put it simply, many devs needed to focus on previous and current-gen consoles when creating games, meaning they could not take full advantage of this current generation's features and hardware, otherwise the games would not work on previous gen. So, for the purposes of this video, when thinking about the current gen hardware, you should be thinking of two features the consoles provide. One, better and more complex graphics, and two, the SSD loading only this generation can utilize. Now you may say, wait, there are so many current gen exclusives which showcase awesome graphics. There's also Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man 2 that showcase SSD loading. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm trying to say that until recently, we did not actually know what we were missing. Let's start by discussing visuals and graphics. The PlayStation 5 and Series X has consistently been called weak by many, but in reality, devs are still trying to figure out how to fully take advantage of the consoles. Recently, we have seen great examples of the direction visuals are headed in with Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, and Alan Wake 2. Not only do we have recent examples, we've also gotten a taste of what the future of games look like. Grand Theft Auto 6 released its trailer, and visually it looks astonishing. The character models, animations, world density, and complexity of this game look too good to be true. However, I am in the camp that believes it will actually look this good when it comes out. This is not Ubisoft. Rockstar releases games that actually look as good, if not better, than the trailer's showcase. GTA 6 would probably be locked at 30 FPS, but for this type of game, I'm okay with it. Ultimately, this shows what current-gen consoles can actually do. And then we have the SSD. Believe it or not, these consoles may not even be close to achieving the full potential of the SSD. Yes, there appears to be near-instant fast travel and Spider-Man 2, but it can actually get better. Why do I think this? Well, this thought of mine started when I watched a Digital Foundry video where they tested an SSD with a read speed of 3.2 gigabytes per second for bandwidth, while the PS5 requires a read speed of 5.5 gigabytes per second. Funny enough, they actually said they made the SSD even slower and worse, which essentially means it should not have been able to work on the PS5. However, they formatted it, it worked, and it ran Spider-Man 2 perfectly. Though there are many reasons for why this SSD works, Digital Foundry mentioned the PS5's decompression block. But what does that do exactly? Well, a few years ago, there was a presentation given by Mark Cerny, who is the lead system designer and architect for the PS4 and PS5. Here, he specifically discussed the hardware, the issues they encountered, and how they got around it. In one part, he talked about the SSD's strengths, but also its bottlenecks. As he explained, there are various parts that will slow down the SSD from performing at the speed it's supposed to. He used an example where SSDs can load 10 times faster than a hard drive, but because of how the parts interact with each other, that speed is not reached, usually only reaching two times the speed. So their goal was to make a machine that would actually allow the SSD to be as fast as it should be without losing speed. Specifically, this was achieved in the PS5 by using a decompression block and other parts. So essentially, everything should be great. The SSD in the PS5 will perform to its fullest potential. But hold on, because that isn't really adding up to what's going on here. There are still games that require some sort of loading, which can range from near instant to a couple of seconds. Now this is awesome as is and completely okay with me, but yet again it is only recent, at least for me, when I realize the SSD has yet to be fully utilized. As Digital Foundry explains, it is more complex than simply utilizing an SSD's read and write speed. Sure, the parts inside the console need to interact with each other efficiently, but the game developers need to know how to take advantage of the SSD. Moreover, the game engine itself needs to be used efficiently to take advantage of the SSD as well. Essentially, when you see newer games requiring loading screens, it means the devs are not utilizing the SSD sufficiently. 
By seeing a far slower SSD successfully run a quick loading game like Spider-Man 2, we know the SSD speeds are more than enough to do the job. We know this because the PS5's minimum requirements are much higher than this slow SSD. So this all leads to an exciting question. Can loading be even faster? What would that even look like in practice? Conveniently, Mark Cerny provided an answer to this. In his presentation, he mentioned how SSDs without bottlenecks would be so fast that if a character was looking in one direction, but chooses to turn the camera and look in the opposite direction, the SSD would be quick enough to load all the assets as the camera is turning. That is the potential of what games could be for this generation, and as devs take more time to figure out these consoles, the more they'll be able to utilize everything fully, not to mention the benefits this truly instant loading would have on game design. I will echo the same sentiment I mentioned in my previous video, which is this. Video games at the end of a console generation push the consoles to their limit because devs have worked with the hardware for so long that they have had time to optimize everything in the console fully. Thus, the truth of current gen is one of positivity and excitement. The simple truth is that this current gen has barely begun. Of course, this does rely on devs to utilize these consoles to the fullest, and not every development team can be like Rockstar or Guerrilla, but no matter what, it is good that developers are slowly figuring out how to showcase what these consoles can be capable of. Heck, we may never quite get to the end goals I have mentioned in this video, but it does look like the industry is at least progressing in that direction, and that should excite gamers. It certainly excites me. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.